Oh, there we go. There we, there we, there we go. Okay, which screen am I wanting to look at here? Let's focus on the twitchers. Okay, we're just going to continue doing this Voron build. And um, I'm doing a little bit each night. And um, each time I do the Voron build, I do want to go live on YouTube and Twitch. But mostly YouTube, just so I can record my progress. So I've got uh, overhead cameras going here. i got four views and blah, blah, blah. So last night we left off with the frame, uh, with the Z-axis frame, with the, with the uh, linear rails. Um, one thing I did do off camera last night um, was I took these off, all the linear rails, took them all apart again, and I did add some um, grease to them. I greased all my linear rails with, uh, where did I put it? I used the uh, Super Lube. Super Lube Multipurpose Synthetic Grease with PTFE. So they're all greased up. All greased up and nowhere to go. So now I'm going to, I picked up a cheap, well not cheap, it wasn't, wasn't cheap, it's a Weller soldering iron um, so that I could put the tip that they provided for doing the heat insets. Now, I was thinking to myself, well, Let's, well, while I'm thinking to myself, let me grab this base so I have somewhere to put this while I heat it up. Should I practice doing a heat inset? Because, um, let me plug this in. Come on. There's a plug here somewhere. There it is. There we go. So we'll get this guy heated up. And... I've never done a heat inset like this before, so, but it can't be that difficult. Is that going to heat up? Yes, it's going to heat up, and no, I'm not going to burn myself tonight. I'll try. I'll try to burn myself, but no promises. So, ah, more Voron building. Yes, hey, Scott. Hey, non-fam. More Voron building. So just to, just maybe for an hour, hour and a half tonight. Um, just to because I, I I'm on a deadline to have this done by the Maker Fair. So and I know there's a lot of work done on this. So we're gonna try a couple of these heat insets. Never done them before. So let's. I'm not even gonna practice. Um, they kind of make this sort of idiot proof. Um, I think I only need two for now. But they uh, they give you some decent quality heat insets here. And the piece that it's got to sit on right here, actually, let me bring this camera over here over. It'll be easier to see this. Come on. I got a crowded desk because I got so many little parts going here. Let's see. Well, this camera, there we go. So the, they've done this actually pretty good. So the type of inset or type of heat insert or whatever you want to call that, they're giving me, it's actually kind of neat because it's got a little bit of a lip on it. And that actually sits just nicely right in where it's got to go. Now, um, I gotta, let me just see. I'm going to wet my sponge here a bit. Oh, come on. Wet my sponge just a little bit. There we go. And then, so I'll go back to this. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm hot enough. Because Now, actually, to test my heat, actually, I guess I could just take one of my scrap pieces here make sure i'm hot enough to actually melt and i am hot enough to melt heat inset's not bad at all just stay perpendicular and stop when it's flush that's the that's the key is stopping when it's flush so let me so i got to get down at an angle to see this and let's just see what happens here Ooh, that was pretty slick. That was pretty slick. I think that worked, and I stopped when it was flushed to the surface. That was that was slicker than owl shit, as I say. Okay, that went fast. Mind you, the iron gets hot. There's no temperature control in this iron. So let's try the second one. Oops, come on. 
a little more. Oh, there we go. It's a little below flush, but I think it'll work. Just a tad below flush, but I think it'll do the job. Very cool. And that's it. So i got to unplug this now. Okay, that's my first time doing heat insets, or whatever you want to call that. Cool. Native fruit heat inserts jig comes with handy with Voron builds. Yeah. I actually, um, somebody local here showed me a, a make they did one time. I have a, um, I'll pop it up here. I have this little thing here. It's actually a, like a drill press thing for your, um, um, Dremel, sorry. It's a Dremel drill press, basically, right? So, and there's an adapter, and I've got to find the file, but uh, there's an adapter you can print for your for your soldering iron, okay? And just imagine, so your soldering iron with a heat insert tip is on there, and then you basically you basically take your piece, and you're coming and you're coming down straight. I mean, you know, you got a straight base, and you're and you can't help but be straight on it, so. Um, I, I've, I've had this for a while, but I've got to find the, the adapter piece to put in here to put the soldering iron on it. I thought I could do it tonight, but I don't have the actual piece I need. So, But I think that turned out okay. So we have skipped back to the prep part here, and then I've got to grab the cable chain and take that one part off. So here is the cable chain. And I am taking off, they're showing it going this way. Um, kind of backwards. I guess it doesn't matter which end. They're both, oh no, that's the right end. So I'm going to pop out the end with the holes in it. So we're going to pop that end off. And this end off. There we go. So that's the end right there that I want. That's the end right there. Actually, what I should do... Um, let me just switch things up here a little bit because you guys don't need to see the manual and I can always zoom in on the manual if need be. So instead of the, instead of the, where's my um, video capture device? I don't need the display capture. Let's get rid of the display capture on that. Let's add in video capture device. Let's add in the close-up camera, which I think is this one yeah that's it there so i'm just going to put this right over in this corner here there we go i think that's a better camera to have over there than than actually have and if i want to show the manual i can just flip like this and we have the manual so there's the chain link i'm doing right now so that's the piece right here and this piece shows being bolted screwed into this piece right here where we just put the inserts in so and we're using m3 by 8 button heads there we go i like this view better hey hutchmaker space hello and derek cirillo and uh scott lemke i said hi and non fan yeah good glad there's a few people here watching as i say i'm just popping on at night when uh when uh, the wife and child go to bed and uh, my daddy duties are done, and we'll just stream for an hour, hour and a half, and then I just go watch a show or two and wind down for the night. So let's see. So this should just go in here. I uh, avoided a little bit of a mistake yesterday. I found it today, and I fixed it today. I'll show you in a second here. This is exciting because, you know, like, at first I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to jump on the Voron bandwagon, but you know what? I'm kind of glad that I reached out. I'm glad these guys um, are supporting me and sent this to me to build for the show because, you know, after doing the rat rig, it's it's kind of an exciting, it's, it's very exciting doing this stuff. So, so we're going to snug this up. There we go. So that's the, and yeah, so those heat sets, they work perfectly. Look at that. I like it. Cool. I'm gonna I think I can, I'm gonna get to like the heat set thing and probably use it more in my designs and models. So, hey Ben, how are you? Okay, so um, let's see. So we got that prepped. We've got the heat inserts prepped. We've got this prepped. I watched the video. That actually, the link there takes you to um, Stefan CNC Kitchen. Talks all about heat sets and the different kinds and quality ones and. 
obviously the ones they've provided here for this build are the high quality in heat sets. So, so we're down to uh, this portion of the model right here. No, not quite. I finished off here. So I noticed, so I, I went ahead and I, and I always do this and I, and I found a mistake I made. So I went ahead in the manual um, because if you skip ahead and apparently they're really good for this, uh, they'll get to a part where they'll, you, you'll be at a certain stage and they'll say, okay, here you go. So now they're going to say, let's verify things. And so they verify all your nuts. And then I looked down here and I said, two M3 nuts here. And I said, I don't remember them asking for those. But so then I went back and they do ask for them, but it's not clear. Um, and so right, let's see where that part came in. It was right, boom, right here. Okay. And you got to read, and I'm learning that. So I assumed when they said preload M3 nuts 2, that was for this one and for this one. But no, it said additional M3 nuts into the highlighted slot between the ones added to affix the M3 by 6. So I had missed those. Okay, so I went in and I just added in. So right in here, I had missed those. And if I had gone on... Um, if I had gone on and did a, more of the build, blah, 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 the further I go, the more I have to take apart to actually get these in and fixed. So, um, and then also what I did off camera, um, because it's not really critical, uh, off camera, I picked up a, I picked up a square. Okay. One of these, one of these type guys here. Um, I took these rails off. And then I made, and I, and after I inserted these two nuts I was missing, I reassembled the, the frame and I took my square, I checked my square with the corners, which was perfect. And then I also did the cross, the, you know, you know crisscross measurements, which was perfect. So I am 150% confident that this is dead square. And then I did do my 58 millimeters in. I believe it was 58 millimeters in and uh, let's see. Yeah. So 58 millimeters in from here to here. And then between these two was 54 millimeters. The only thing I didn't verify was that the total space was 127, but it should be very accurate at 127 if I did my job right, which is 126. Let's see right there. Right there 126.9 yeah and again you know uh, one tenth of a millimeter i'm not fussing over because every caliper is a little different too so yeah so i'm confident that this guy is all set and ready to go as it is so so this guy's going to be okay <clears throat> so thanks everybody who's joined in and i appreciate it it's uh um, it's just, um, just me doing a bit more building here tonight. So looks like we have, uh, 70 of you on YouTube and three on the Twitters, on the Twitches, Twitters, Twitches. Okay. So I verified those measurements, top, top and bottom. Okay. I've, I've verified both measurements. So this is parallel. Now there's another test that we do coming up on a step where we run the uh, bed up and down. And if there's any binding, then we have to uh, fix it up. So so now we're going to move on from this page onto this page. And this is where I put the two um, stops on the bottom. So with the M38 button nuts. So I can unplug these little stoppers that they build in. And again, for those of you that just joined, um, I did off camera last night, take all my linear rails, all five of them, and... Um, took them, slid them off the end very carefully. They fortunately, these are the ones that have the wires that are holding the balls in. And I did um, lube them with a PTFE um, silicone grease. So these are all lubed up properly now. So 126.9, that's too close for comfort. <laughs> it works. Well, that's what I read. But if I threw my other, fortunate, unfortunately, my other calipers that I have here, the battery died. So... Um, and then I have a third pair somewhere. I ordered one today off Amazon.com, so I'll have four. But the one on Amazon.com, I spent a little bit more money to get an accurate, uh, uh, super accurate caliper set of ver ver vernier calipers. So, and it was cheap. I mean, Amazon.com, exact same thing. 
Um, I ordered off Amazon.com in the U.S. So, yes, I'm supporting the U.S. economy, I'm proud to say. Um, let me find a couple of my shops here while I talk. The exact same product, okay? Same brand name, everything. I bought off Amazon.com. I paid 48 shipping and all. Shipping, duty, um, import fees, you name it. I paid $48. Okay, uh, Canadian, buying it from Amazon.com, okay? Amazon.ca, same thing, exactly the same thing, $85 Canadian. And people wonder why I'm shopping in the U.S. when I could buy in Canada. That's why. Almost double the price, and it's like, forget this. So Amazon's my friend. Amazon is my friend. I think these are button heads, M3 by 8 button heads. There we go. So those are loaded. I think I have to load some nets in here. I do. You have to load a lot of nets in these things. So I, I, I have an exclusive box for these little net things. So, so I need some square. I'll just use some hex nets. I'm using a combination of hex and square nets. It doesn't really matter. They are all doing the same thing. So we've got some square nuts here, so let me find some, or hex nuts here. So we'll load a hex nut here, and a hex nut there, here a hex nut, there a hex nut, everywhere a hex, hex nut. Let's load a hex nut in here. These black ones I just printed with the black ABS seem to slide in easier than the green ones I did. So it's interesting, and it's all the same print settings and everything. So right now, what's printing on my FlashForge Creator 3 in black ABS is my uh, top hat. I think it's called the top hat frame, which is like the top lid. So there we go. You're in there, and you're in there. I believe I can slide you right up to the linear rail, and you right up to the linear rail. And we will grab the proper wrench and screw you in. Vendor dependent. The vendors can charge whatever they want. There's a reason they say caveat. Yeah, no kidding, right, Ben? And I find that a lot, um, a lot. And because they even have the nice thing about Amazon.com as a Canadian shopping there is um, there we go. As I have, it's a little button you click when they know you're shopping in Canada. They say that, so they say okay, here's the price. They say plus duties and import fees. Okay, and shipping because I don't have an Amazon Prime US. Shipping is nothing. They don't charge much. And you click this button and it shows you your total purchase in US dollars. And then when I check out, I have the option of paying in US or Canadian dollars when I check out from the US site, because it knows I'm in Canada. So I just, I'm, I'm flabbergasted at the difference in price sometimes. Okay, there we go. We have the bottom, the bottom stoppers in place for the ends of the linear rails, so these should all just be nice now. Beautiful. Okay. Hey, Andrew Osmond. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, let's go back to screen one. So we've done that. We've put these stops in. I want to make sure. Well, we got the recap coming up if I've missed anything. So now we are going to put on the Z-axis, and these are the uh, bed mounts. So let me just, because my eyes and that screen is far away from me, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here just to cheat because, you know, my 59-year-old eyes. Carefully apply a small amount of thread locker to the screws. I don't have thread locker. Oh, they didn't supply any thread lock. Do I really need to? Huh. Apparently that everything was supposed to be provided, but why is there water? Oh, because I spilt my... I got water all over the bottom of my mouse because that's when I poured water into the sponge and the soldering iron. I wasn't really, really careful. So I do not have any thread locker. Huh. Well, is it absolutely necessary? Use small access hole along the hex driver to fasten the screws. Okay, that's fine. But do I need thread lock? A small amount. I don't think they included any. I better check. 
let me just check the bags because apparently they give you everything you need, but possibly they don't give you any thread lock. I'm going to just double check all the bags in the boxes here real quick. Hey, Tim Jackson. How are you? Another Tim. Good name, man. Um, nothing here, nothing here. I don't think there's anything in here. No, that's just the bed. And the hot, that's just the bed and the flex plates. Let me move these tools. I'm running out of room. Good thing I have a massive workspace. And let me check. Here's my assembly manual printed. Electronics and wiring and the motors. I don't think, unless for whatever odd reason it would be in with all the electronics, they provided me a hundred zip ties. But I don't think they provided me with any thread lock. Oh, those are the skinniest zip ties in the world. Um, and that's, no, that is a printer steppy. I don't know what that is. Printer steppy. <laughs> Figure that out later. No, no thread lock. The heat sink. We have a 16 gig micro SD. Yeah, wow. Okay, well, kit does not come with thread locker. Do I need it? Jason, you're on. Do I need to use thread locker where they've said to use thread locker, which is in this step right there? Specifically, right there. Do I need to use it? If I do, then I'm kind of done for the night. And I'm going to go by the advice of those who have done this before. Try super glue. Super glue. See, the problem with super glue is. It dries pretty quick, and if I ever want to get it out, whereas Loctite, um, I mean, I can go to my local hardware store and buy Loctite, but not this time of night. They're going to be closed. I could skip ahead, and I could always just pre-populate some nuts. Uh, nail polish. Uh, we don't have nail polish. Maria gets... Goes and gets pedicures and manicures. I don't want a Windows update. Not really needed, Jason says. Okay. Well, I mean, if these things tighten in fine, and I'm gonna I'm gonna trust you and take your word for it because you would not lead me astray. <laughs> okay, so we actually so we got the uh it was exciting that I got those heat sets in because first time doing I mean I was a heat set virgin, but I'm not anymore. So this guy's gonna go on here like this. And I see this. That's the cable chain link. Ah, that's why you had to put that on first. Because if you put this on and then you try to put this piece on, good luck. I, I corrected as Jason. You see, I put those two nuts that were missing in there. Uh, I lubed, took apart, and lubed all the linear rails. And we got this thing so square, it's hip to be square. So there we go. Belly button lint. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, got lots of that. Okay, so I need M2 by 8. SH. Uh, M2 by 8 SH. They're not button head. Those are called. Let me just go back to... I want to make sure I do the correct thing. M2 by H. SHR. And once I, I'll learn it. SH socket head. Okay. SHSC, M2 by 8 socket head. Let's go back to that drawing. There we go. Socket head cap screws. M2 by 8. They are going to be tiny little buggers. M2 by 6. M2 by 8 socket head. Right here. Here we go. 12 pieces. They're puny. Not enough forces on this printer to crank it loose. Find after a few hundred hours of something loose and add it in those spots if appropriate. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, it's not like it's a massive 300 millimeter bed. Okay, so we're going to need one, two, three, four, eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can put the other four back in the bag for now. I would think and hope 
Um, I won't know for now, but I would think they would give you a spare or two of, of everything in this kit. Especially when you're dealing with screws so tiny, I would hope they'd give you a couple spare pieces of things. So, okay, so we're going to attach uh, four and four. Okay, should be pretty simple. And that is the right size. Look at that. Hey, 3D printer newbie Milan, how are you? Welcome. Let's turn this to the side. And let's get at least one of them in there to go. Come on, find the hole. There's the hole. No, that wasn't the hole. That was the edge of the... There it is. Good. Find the first one. The rest of them shall follow. Okay, I won't tighten them all until I get them all in. And I like that they stick nicely on the tip of my hex wrench. A mix of earwax and old Chinese newspapers work well. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. I'm waiting for Jason to say, you want to know the easy way now? But I think I see that I've got lots of room to get that fourth one in there. Okay, so we have that one. There's three that are snug now. This fourth one... I'm going to probably need to um, the fourth one's going right down that hole so I'm going to need to get my tweezers and I'm going to place it in the hole let it fall and I go in through this tiny hole which this wrench fits perfectly in Look at that. Look at that, like a glove. There we go. There we go. We're on and we're snug. And we have the second one here. This guy goes this way. You should print yourself the safety staples easy button. I should. <laughs> You're right. That was easy. I'm waiting for um I'm waiting for the point where I say, oh well, all the hard part's done, but I think on this build, maybe it's all a hard part. It's a matter of being observant and, and and as jason has warned me several times and other people i've read about and watched warn you make sure you get all the nuts that are supposed to be where they're supposed to be because if i hadn't have caught that one those two the further i go along in the build the harder it is to correct okay there we go and we're going to need the tweezers for this one to drop in. Okay, so we'll drop you in the hole. There you go. Come on. Find the slot. You're in there. I know you're in there somewhere. There you are. There we are. Done. Hey, apprentice. Where you been on? I'm probably saying hi to people multiple times. Man, those are slickered now. Shit, those things slide really nice. Okay. Um, next step. Screw access. Okay, I know, those tiny little holes. I was wondering what those tiny little holes were for. And then when I first put my um, little drive, nut, um, hex driver down here, they wouldn't quite fit, and they have a two-millimeter drill bit. So I just reamed them out a little bit, and then that just fit down there slicker than, slicker than bat shit. There we go. Perfect. Smart thinking, though, all these access holes. Okay. 
We're getting on to the next page. Preload 1M3 nut, 1M3 nut, and then on the bottom, 2M3 nuts and 6M3 nuts. Man, that's a lot of preloading. Okay, let's put you aside for a minute. Okay, we'll put you aside. We want this piece. Okay, so we got to make sure we're the right way up. So this is the right way up. So the hole is on the top. So I know that's the right way. And the Voron logo goes left to right, slanting upwards, and that's the bottom. Okay. So we got to... Why does that feel... Oh, it's because the, the screws, Tim. Duh. So let me grab my <coughs> loaded nuts. We'll just stick with the hex nuts since I have a whole bunch of hex nuts right in front of me, the black hex nuts. And we'll preload a bunch. Okay. I gotta print I know I gotta print more of these little guys. So come on, get in there, you little Pias lovely thing come on there we go so they want one here okay let's push you in a little bit okay another one there we go i see why it takes a while to build these because it's a lot of preloading of nuts Play around with your nuts a lot in this build. There's two. There was two, those are preloaded. Then we turn it over. So the screws are on the bottom. Okay, so the screws are facing me. So we want six preloaded along the top here. Okay. one this is the boring part when you're watching the stream one come on where are my hex ones there's a hex I've got square nuts too i've been mixing square and hex i don't think that matters except you know i'm sure i'm gonna hear from jason later he's gonna say ah oh, you know you shouldn't mix your nuts and i'm gonna say man I'm a fan of mixed nuts. Three, well, I don't like those big um, chestnuts, I don't think. But I like pecans and walnuts. I can eat almonds. Hello, all. John Smith, Brent Miller. Hello. Countdown. There's four. There's another hex one. Is there light on in here? It is good. That's why you can actually see a little bit. Well, Preloading them all from the same side. Maybe I shouldn't, but I am. Too bad. Five. And one more hex nut. Here we go. Six. Okay, so let's just spread these out a little. I'm not quite sure what they're for. One, two, three, four five six there we go six preloaded now we've got six up top it wants me to preload two on the bottom here okay and just to be different i'm going to make them green the green inserts because basically <laughs> I, I, it's going to be interesting to see what this thing looks like when it's done because um there was no why, why do the green ones not fit as nice as the black ones? There's no rhyme or reason to my choice of colors for the, um, that's pretty stiff, but they'll work their way in as I put them in. There we go. There's no rhyme or reason to my choice of colors for the parts that I printed. Some in green, some in black, um, black frame. So it's basically a green and black printer, but I don't know. You know, some of the ones I've seen had three colors because they had the print head thing was a third color. And anyways, okay, there's the two preloaded nuts there. So we have six preloaded nuts. 
and two preloads on the bottom. Okay. So to confirm, we've loaded six up here, two up there, and we've loaded one on each side. Okay, perfect. We should be good on that piece. So next screen. There we go. So now we are going to drop those things in there, and we're going to use button head cap screws to attach it with those two preloaded nuts I just put in. Okay, perfect. Ah, oh, itchy back. Okay, so, so we're coming to here. Actually, I can do this laying it down still. I think we're still okay. And then we are putting this this way up. So I've got to get that nut slid over a bit more. I guess that's half the battle here is also lining up these nuts. So I'd rather be outside wide than outside wide. Then when I put them in... Um, no, nope, we're going to come in a little bit more oh, there. And as long as I can kind of see the hole, I can kind of force them to line up. Yeah, like that. Then I can come in and pull that this way and I can come in and pull this this way there we go and then we need the m8 button heads i'm sorry m3 by 8 button heads are we talking bets on how many you'll eventually miss um oh that's not an m3 by 8 see look at they're trying to trick me they put an m3 by 10 in with the m3 by 8s or a 12. nice try voron or um L ldo Anyways, um, yeah, you can take bets, but I am not. You know what? I learned my lesson. Okay, so let's. I've learned my lesson. There's that one. And we got to do the other side here. You only say because you had to disassemble mine a few times for missed nuts. And I almost missed one, right? I almost missed those two right off the bat. I almost missed I almost missed these two right down here. Because yeah, they mention it, but it's kind of a misleading the way they mention it. Now I know what they say. Now, here's an interesting point now. So those are in, and now they're gonna say to put the two underneath the bottom. Okay, so and here's where so there's six oh the six in the back. One, two, three four oh see those six in the back of two of them have got to line up and then the other four have got to stay in the middle so i wonder if i didn't put them far enough see these are little things that i guess you so there's one two three four yeah those two are definitely not going to be far enough so i'm going to have to take that off <laughs> cool tattoo oh this one thanks i've got another kind of a big shark versus octopus one there I have to take this off. Let's see. Unless they do, they tell you. If I go back up, do they tell you to keep them? No, they just say preload six nuts. They don't say keep them all ganged towards the center because if they're hidden underneath over here, you're not going to be able to get at them. No. Why would they say that? But yeah, no, you guys watching knew that, but you just wanted to see me take it apart again. <laughs> That's okay. Learn as we go. Been doing good, Paul. Thank you. Like painting a floor. Don't paint yourself into a corner. No kidding. Okay, so let's pull that out. So these six, we kind of got to line these all up in the middle because we're going to want to do three, four, and kind of an even spacing here so that so that when I get underneath here, Oh, I see. So when I get underneath here, these two, I can kind of guess here where these two are going to go. Um, push that over. Push this one over. Middle of that. Middle of that. That's kind of a... Oh, that's even further. So... Uh, 
Let's see, these are almost staying almost staying towards the outside. Now, if there's a different trick to this, feel free to pipe up. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's kind of okay. It's, it's so hard to know where they're going to line up to. When you center the two nuts, put a screw in them to keep them in place. When you center the two nuts... Oh, um, are you speaking on this side, Jason, on the back side? Because on the back, so let's see, on the back of this, I'm going to need those two on the back. Where is that one going to? Oh, there's four that are holding it on the back. I see. So center those two. I see what you're saying. So there's four. Wow. Not that this is complicated, but it's like, wow. Wow. So I kind of need to see on the end, two of them are coming out. Okay. Well, these are pretty much, oh, wow. I see what you're saying. I, I see what you're saying, Jason. I really do. Um, but on, on the back side, there we go. This is a better view. I can kind of see right here where those ones in the back have to line up. There's four being screwed in and two in the middle left. So I can kind of guess to line up these ones. So this way, this way. Because I can't get into the end to push them in any further when, once I do this. Okay, and then these ones here are coming over. These ones are coming over. The two in the center are going to stay put because they're they're nice and stiff. So there, I think I'm doing this right. And there, I think I got the kind of the right idea here. I, I don't know. But I think before I screw the front ones in, so we have these ones. So it's like in there like this. There we go. Now, I think before I screw these front ones in, I should make sure that the ones underneath are actually going to line up. So, Because I've got to line up this one and this one. And then I have to come in the back and line up. There's one, two, three, four of them in the back to line up. So, yeah, that's interesting. Ah. <sighs> Nobody told me it was going to be like this hard. No, I'm kidding. It takes patience is all it is. It just takes patience. So let's come in. Let's come in the back here. here. Let's move this. I'm trying to give everybody a view of what I'm doing here. So let's do that. So I need to come in the back and I need to get this one lined up. Now, how good did I do there? Oh, look at that. Home run there. I'm not going to tighten it. And Jason's thinking, hmm. Now, ideally, if there was a guide that would tell you exactly where to place these nuts in the rail, and look at that. That one just happened to fit. So my guess on that was perfect. Now it's these bottom ones. Okay, so there's one, two, one, two, three, four to go in, and it's a matter of whether I've lined those up well enough to luck my, to luck out and hit them let's just see let's just see so i'm going to turn this away so i can see the holes and that i can feel there's nothing there see that's kind of where i'm kind of getting baffled okay i can see these two it's no problem but the end ones okay so i think basically i think what i'm seeing okay Anybody kind of frustrated with me watching me yet? No? Because I'm kind of seeing a pattern here. Um, I'm kind of seeing a pattern here. They've actually made this thing. Mama said there'd be days like this. Good son. Nobody told me there'd be days like these. Um, I'm seeing a pattern here. Um, when they've lined these up, there we go. They've actually got these things so that you just go right to the end and right to the end, and it should work. should be lined up fairly good. 
I think I'm good to go now. There. Okay. Super fun for you to watch. <laughs> well, you've been through this. And I'm kind of learning the patterns here. And I know, and I'm learning now. Okay, now I'm starting to figure out, okay, I got to line these nuts up here and here. So let's see if my, I'm not going to tighten anything down yet, but let's see if my theory was correct on the back here. Let's see if my theory was correct. If I'm correct, this should line up with the nut. And it didn't. Okay, but can I see the nut? And actually, let me grab a flashlight here and let me look and see down the hole. There's the nut. Okay, so if I take this in and I shimmy that nut over, right, that one, and can I see that nut? I can. Hang on a sec. So let me get this one in. Super fun for you to watch. I'll tell you, though, why are you not gripping? These are supposed to be... Oh, okay. Well, okay. First thing to do, make sure you're using the right length screw. M3 by 12s. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Eight millimeters ain't gonna cut it. How long are you? Gonna, how long were you gonna let me struggle with that, Jason? Huh? Come on, be honest. M three by twelves. But you know what? Live and learn. Okay. Now we've gripped a nut. Look at that. Now this one. It's not quite uh, uh, lined up. So I need to get this, my little tool in there. And just kind of slide that nut over. You don't want to quite slide over, do you, you little nut? That was too far. Come on. Where are you? Dang. Oh, you fell out. How did... How could you fall out? You little son of a... You little bastard, you fell out. Fortunately, okay. A fiddly build, sometimes frustrating, once done and running. I, yeah, I figure it is. I figure it is, Brent. I'll tell you, though, um, the rat rig build has given me a ton of patience for stuff like this because I know it's not something you can rush. Now, can I get this back in without having to pull this whole piece out again? You fell out, like, easily. You whistled. You, you just sort of went shh and came right out. So, come on. Surely, and I know you don't want me to call you Shirley, but surely you can slide in as easy as you slid out, you little. Okay, there we got that there. Come on. Okay. Okay. You're going to be a real prick, aren't you? You are going to be a little... How did you manage to slide out so easy, but yet you won't go in easy? LOL. Wee! <laughs> hey, Dougal. <laughs> uh, maybe I can get away with just a nut without the nut holder. Let's just see. Because all I really need is to get a nut in place in there. Oh, yeah, sure. I don't want to take this all off again. Oh, come on, son of a bitch. 
Oops, I shouldn't have said that out loud. I'm sorry. Okay, there. Get in there. Get in there. Okay. The nut is in there. Can I keep it in there? Gently. Gently. I see it. I see it. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, I have nutage. I have nut grippage. I have nut grippage. Woof. That was like movie of the week drama now i'm blinded by that light and i can't see anything unless i use this light again so i'm going to slide that nut into place this flashlight's too heavy to stick in my mouth there we go slide you into place don't go too far please don't go too far there we go you're in place and you're in place. You went too far. Okay. Uh, where's the 12 millimeters? Right here. Nuttage. <laughs> this is nutty. Okay. Tell me I caught the nut. Tell me I caught the nut. I caught the nut. And these are all 12s, right? Yes, they're all 12 millimeters. And I'm just going to catch one more nut here. Okay, I caught all the nuts now. I got the back nuts. Now I just need these front nuts, which are the eights. Okay, good. Oh. That was a that was a chore and a half. Okay, now I can snug. So we got these two snugged. Okay, we got the underneath ones snugged. How easy to change out the Vox Lab 3D printer to Creality Board? I don't know. I'm not familiar with the Vox Lab, Paul. I'm not familiar with the Vox Lab. And we will snug up these back ones. Whoops. I think that's a good sign that it just rolled. Okay. There we go. That's pretty smooth. Which I think is what they're going to be checking next for bindage. I don't feel any binding there. I don't know if it should just fall easily on its own. But don't see any bindage. But let's see what the next step says. Hey, Dominic, you're not late. This was an impromptu stream, which is what it's going to be all week. It's just whenever I get a chance to pop on and do some Voron work. I'm going to do it. Okay, let's go over here, everybody, to the next page. Uh, use a ball-in driver, which is fine. To fasten the left screw. I didn't need a ball-in driver. Mine fit in there just fine. Make sure two of the preloaded nuts are located in the center, and they are. They're in the middle. Okay. Next page. Tramming. Here we go. So, tramping, tramming. Check for any binding and snags while moving the bed carrier up and down the rails. The bed carrier must be able to move freely along the entire length of the rail. If it does not loosen the blind joints of the extrusion that hold the right rail, you'll need to remove the stopper at the end extrusion to access the screw. Move the bed carrier along the entire length. Progressively tighten the blind joint. Should it start to bind, loosen blind joints again and retry. It may take a couple of attempts to get it right. I think... I think I'm okay. 
I was extremely, extremely careful when I was measuring here and here and then the gap here and here. And I checked and double checked and triple checked. So I don't feel any binding. I mean, I'm not sure. It's not as, of course, it's not as smooth as they were when they were individual and there was nothing joining the two. But I don't feel anything binding that at all. I think I'm good. I'm, I'm pushing, I'm feeling, I'm do, using my binding finger. I mean, I don't know, is that how picky is the binding thing? You missed a lot of net play is all, what, loosening and playing with the nets. I think I'm good, though, because there's no bind. Nothing is binding that. It's it's not. I can't, like, like, I can't push it and have it go right to the top, but I don't think I want to. I think I'm good. I lucked out on the rat rig in this part, too, as far as the uh, x-axis goes. Or the y-axis, sorry. But I think I'm okay. No, the x. Yeah, it was the x, the front and back. I was pretty good. There was no binding on that either. I think, um, I think if you're careful in measuring the distances, I think that's the critical part of it, if the distance. So, in other words, if the distance in here is that exactly that... Uh, what was it? It was 53, 53. No, it was 54. So I'm 54 dead on. And in here, I'm 54 dead on. So I think that helps a lot because that's the exact distance. You want. Anyways, I'm going on way too much about this. I think it looks good to me. Looks good to you too, Jason. Good. I think that's fine. Good. Okay. So we've got the tramp done, the tramming, sorry. Now we're on to, oh, here we go to preload some more nuts. So let me grab, put this aside. So we're going to preload some nuts here. So we have the Z-axis. Remove, re, what? Remove the uprights. I just got them all trammed and everything. Are you crazy? Jeez. Took them apart. Now you want me to remove them. Okay, well, I can do that. Okay, well, let's remove both the Z-axis. Really? Okay. I guess if I want to install those nuts, I have to remove them. I don't have to totally take the screws out. Okay. There's one of them removed. Like, geez, you just you told me to build it, and now you're telling me to tear it apart. Make up your mind. Why didn't you tell me to preload these earlier? Huh? Huh? Okay, we've removed them. Okay. Now, removed. Now, let's see. On the top rail, okay, we're on the top, and we're this way. Let's move you down. There we go. Here, look at that. Preload six M3 nuts on the top and preload one M3 nut on the back. Okay. Going to 1030 tonight, guys. Six M3 nuts. I hope I have enough of these nut loaders. I think I do. I only here to help square the upper and lower for the z-axis to be ah okay makes sense yeah of course I, I, I'm and I'm not I'm not really complaining I'm just kind of having fun with the fact that I have to tear it apart after I put it all together and get it nice and square but they are square so it's hip to be square though so oh come on some of you are tight and some of you are loose you're loose you're snug, but that's okay. You'll you'll loosen up. You'll loosen up when you need to. Three. Did you use these little insert things? The green does look good with the black, doesn't it? Did you use these little nut insert things, Jason? These little cheaters? Or did you just slide loose nuts in? I'm just curious. I just know that it was highly recommended to do those. Three. Four. 
You guys are awful snug. One. Oh, that's too snug. Oh, there we go. That loosened up. Three. Four. Oh, that's tight. That is tight. You did not use them. Oh, man. It must have been fun if, if the nuts were just slipping and sliding. So what you're saying is I'm kind of doing the wimpy way. <laughs> They're okay, but they can be a pain in the arse to move. But hey, it's all good. Slip sliding away. Slip sliding. Oh, I got to be careful. Apparently I can get demonetized or copyright strike just for singing. Dang. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one on the back. Okay. Is that what she said? She did. <laughs> Gosh. You guys. Okay, you are, man, you are tight. Um, let's try a different... Let's try one of the black ones. That that was tight. Oh, that's better. That goes in much smoother, though it's hard to see because it's black. Okay, one. Okay, we have six on the top, one in the back. And I'm going to just verify we have six on the top, one in the back. Okay, remove uprights. That's what we're doing. Oh, right there. They were temporarily attached to help with tramming. That's just what Jason said. Okay. And then preload six M3 nuts on the bottom, along the bottom. Okay. Very bottom. Who am I to argue? Don't fall out any of you. You can go down bed. I know that's pretty. Right, let's stack you up so you're a little bit. There we go. Okay. If you get some time, look into the mods, such as handles, adding LED lights. If you want to do that later, you can preload nuts for them also. Oh, where would I preload the nuts, though? I'm trying to picture how this all comes together. Interesting. Interesting. Now you tell me. <laughs> um, let's get some, because I'm running out of these. Uh, let me get some square nuts out. I'm running out of these uh, hex nut adapters. I got more square ones here. Now, is there not, and preloading nuts is a great idea, but is there not those um, drop-ins that you can get after the fact, uh, sort of like um, for the um, spool holder things that you get where you just, you pop them in and you turn it and it turns and it locks? Or, or is there nothing like that for, for these size rails? I'm just curious. So six in the back, on the bottom. One... Two. Oh, these ones are much looser. Three. Not for this size extrusion. Okay. That's why we want to preload is whatever we have to. So the LEDs, well, I'd have to check the drawings after and see where exactly I'd preload for stuff like that because I think that would be cool. Come on, come on, little nuts. Not used to. <laughs> it's just gonna. I'll spit it. I'm not used to handling such small nets. <laughs> oh God, I'm embarrassed. Um, these are tiny. <laughs> oh Lordy, thank goodness this is. There's no kids up this late watching. Okay, come on, get in there. Get in the hole. There we go. So. Uh, come on. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Grind the square nuts to fit. Yeah, okay. Well, I yeah, I'll, I'll look through the... Um, I'll do some cheating and look through the... Um, oh, it looks like there's some spare nuts in here in the back, too. Obviously, those back ones are being used for something, too. Wow. Lots of nuts going in here. Um, preload six, preload six. I'll look ahead after and see where the would be the best place to preload them, although I'm sure I could find a place that would tell me. So now... If I go to this, I'm onto this page. So we just did this. We preloaded six nuts along the bottom. Now we are, oh, now we're getting serious. We're taking the other two, the E extrusions, and we're going to put some E extrusions in with some M3 by 10 button heads. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Um, okay. Let me let me stand this up so we're the right way, so I can kind of get the orientation. Then we have these two. Whoops! You guys want to see what I'm doing? Then we have these two. Um, so these are going to go this way. Okay. And then we need the E extrusion. Now the E, I've just got to go back and cheat. So we're on page 34. So I'm just going to go back up and check the E. Which ones are the E extrusions? D, E extrusions are the, the ones with the hole 29 and a half in from the one side. And that is these ones right here. I got hole, hole, no hole, no hole. 29 and a half millimeters. I'm going to make sure, although I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So the E's are going to go in the bottom. What page number was I on? Um, there, there, there. Okay, so obviously the E's... Let me make sure. Let me just let me not assume anything here because I don't know what I'm doing. Looks as much more in depth build than your Tronxy. Probably is. Probably is, Jason. Jason W. Hello. Did you have you been here the whole time? Um, so right now I'm looking at this screen right here. So we need M310 button heads. Let me just tidy up my nuts here. I've got nuts all over the table. So I'm going to just tidy up my nuts here a bit put them back in their sacks there we go put the m3 by eight okay m3 by tens right here button heads now are you going to tell me where to put the screws i see okay oh those two end pieces don't go back on technically i think i'm kind of seeing uh you actually just got here cool um one two three four four of these so i need to put one in the end of this oops so oh, hang on this so i need one in the end of this with the linear rail one in the end of this one okay and I need one in the end now. Which end do the holes go? Okay, let me just, it should be obvious that on the bottom ones, the holes go towards the back because they are going to, I think, let me just cheat and go to the next page. Yeah, of course, the holes have got to go to the, to the back side here because they're going to screw into there but we also need so we need some uh there it is so we need an m3 by 10 in here and then we need an m3 by 10 in here okay that looks good so now we slide 
Looks like this goes in. Is that right? Why am I? They don't make this 100% clear, but looks like these screws come out on the ends. I'll find out in a minute if this is right or not. I think these M38s come out. These were temporary. Actually, those are M3x10s. And I believe I'm going to slide this in here. Whoops. And I believe this is another one of them blind. I believe this goes like this. I believe if I could hit the right hole. <laughs> That's what she said. There we go. And if I'm not mistaken... This becomes our, our y-axis right here. Okay. And then we have another blind screw. They don't really show this on the instructions, but I think as you do more and more, you kind of assume now, or you should assume, or you should know that that's how these pieces are meant to go on even though they don't actually specify it exactly on the instructions. But common sense just says, yeah, this is the way these are going to go on. Because really, there's no other way to fasten them. There we go. So that's the top ones for the Y rails. And we can turn it over. There we go. And we can do similar for this one. So we need some 12s. So some, again, some more blind screwing. No comments. Okay. Oh. Take these M temporary M3s out. <sighs> Ensuring that I haven't forgotten any nut inserts, but I haven't seen some since I did the, all those other ones. They have not requested I insert a nut yet. So. Okay, so we snug that up. I know that this isn't necessarily square, but that'll be taken care of. I'm positive at the next step when we put the rest of the rails on. Okay. And here we go. Yeah, I guess all these camera views kind of work out pretty good. I'm always concerned about having proper camera angles and views and such because, you know, it's not all about me. It's, yeah, I have to be able to see what I'm doing, but also I want you guys to be able to kind of see what I'm doing. This is the bottom, so let's flip that like this. And of course, that'll flatten out. Um, now... So we've done this part here. So we're at this stage right here. It looks just like this. Now they want on the front. I didn't put them on, but I've got to put M3 by 10s on the front. So I've got to put M3 10s right in these front pieces here. Okay. <laughs> 
Jason W's got his mouth zippered closed. What? Did I say something? Did you say something? Well, I can take these little plugs out for linear rails now while I remember. Now that these rails are not, no threat of them falling off the ends now, I can take those little plugs out. Because that'll come back to haunt me if I don't. And then the other, the other Jason won't tell me. He'll just wait until I have an issue with the with the y-axis and he'll say did you take those plugs out but i beat him to it okay so we have that we're at this stage there we are now let's have a peek at the destruction so we've got this we've got We've got these M10, M310s in the back. We've got the M310s in the front. We have all the rails on now. We go to the next stage. We need the H extrusions to go down the back. And we're going to do some measuring. Okay, the H extrusions. So let me zip back up to what the H extrusion should look like, just to be double safe and sure. FGH. They are the ones with the little holes that are seven and a half millimeters from the end on both ends. And there's two of them and they are in my hand. Okay. So we're coming to the back. Let's go back to that page. And H extrusions. Okay. So we're turning this to the back. This camera's kind of useless right now. I'll back it up a little bit here and raise it up just maybe like that. There we go. Now, the holes on the H extrusions go. Well, son of a gun. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. So these go here and here, like so. Oh. I do have the holes the right way, like so. Okay. Um, well, let me just snug these up. I know I have to do a measurement here in a second here. I'm getting smarter. Yes, that's right, Jason. See? But hey, you know what? You're, 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 trust me, when it comes to the um, some of the wiring, possibly in the firmware and the clipper, etc., I'll be crying for your help. Trust me. We'll see. But it is. I, I love the way that these things join. I mean, I think. They could do these on the larger extrusions, on the larger printers. It's it's a great way. It's it's just it's actually genius. If I could actually find the head of the screw, there we go. Okay, so I want to make sure. Um, what measurement are they talking about on that thirty-seven? I think I'm good to snug these up. I think, although this one. It doesn't quite feel like it's level. There we are. Okay, just snug these. Why can I not find the head of that? Anyways, let's get this side. There we go. Turn this over. I'm obviously not on the head of that nut. Oh, 
the heck? Okay, well, let's, can I find this one? What the hell? What's going on? Disease? No, what the heck? Well, there you are. And there you are. Okay. find the heads of the uh, bolts, but that's because the frame wasn't properly sat in place. Okay, now this next step looks, well, I confuse easy. So, so we've got these ones on. So we're at this stage right here. Now it's showing thirty-seven millimeters. But where, where am I? Okay, hang on a minute here. So if I stand this up backwards kind of like upside down like this is that the right way yeah no yeah like this so they're showing 37 millimeters from the top of this to this extrusion here i believe that's what they're trying to tell me which really that can't be adjusted because this is fixed in a hole here. Anyways, let's measure it and see. We're zeroed. Okay, hang on. Got to be an easier way to measure this. Um, oh, right from here. Little trick I learned. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know this about these calipers. Okay, this is a little trick I learned. And and oops, helps if I turn the camera on. I did not know this about these calipers. There is a measurement called offset that you can do. Like, of course, you, you all know that you you know you have your outside dimension, your inside dimension your depth. I didn't know about the one called offset. Um, and this is where it comes in perfect. So the offset is measured from basically from the back of this. So if I want to measure to, to the top of this, okay. So if I want to measure, so if I zero there and I want to measure from here to here without you know, guessing, basically I bring my caliper so that basically, so that this, Right here is this easy view. So the bottom of the bottom of the um, inside one, then I just push basically this until it stops on the rail. Okay, and there's my measurement, thirty-seven point one, and they want it to be thirty-seven. I'm I'm not going to argue over point one. And then the same on this side. If I close it up, zero. Okay, then the uh, it's kind of the opposite here. So I want to put this on here and I want to slide this in here. Oops, kind of like that. And we are at third, hang on. I'm kind of backwards here. There we go. And we are at 36.9. So these are not the most accurate calipers. This only goes to one decimal place. So I'm gonna just double check from this end and make sure Okay, make sure I'm flat, 36.9, and on this side, 37.1. Now, oh no, 37 on the button, 
right there. And then this side, let's do it again, just to be sure, 36.9. Now, I don't know. So we are 0 0.1, 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 off. I don't know how. I guess I could adjust this. Um, if I loosen this, I can move this down a little bit. I suppose that's possible. Um, Thirty-six point nine. See, now it's reading thirty-seven. It's just—it's all depending on how exactly where you hold it. But that's got a thirty-seven, and I—I I think point one is not going to make a huge difference. But I don't know. And this one, that's just. See, that's got a 37.1. So I almost, so I think it's the thickness of a sheet of paper. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm going to fuss with it. 0 0.1 millimeter difference. Um, I could probably loosen this one. And then give it a little just gentle pull. And then measure it again. I suppose I could if I want to be real, real anal about it. And I'm still, oh, there. 37.0. We come back over here. See, now it says 36.8. But if I make sure, 36.8. But if I turn it this way and actually measure it so I can see what I'm doing, 36.8, 36.7. Okay, so um, so maybe I want to take this one and just loosen it off a hair and pull it just a smidgen that way. Because we want to be accurate, right? It's a Voron. We've got to respect the Voron. 37, bang on. I can show you that. 37, bang on. And was it this side I just did? I don't know. What's, I'm getting so confused now. And that just bounced to 37.1. I'm leaving it. I could drive myself nuts worrying about 0.1 of a millimeter, the whole, you know, so. Uh, but I guess they want me to do the bottom too. I... I well, let's just double check the bottom just to be sure. Um, so we're going to go this way. There, 37.1. And then we're going to go this way. Let's bring you in. 37. I can't get a proper reading this way. I have to be looking at it this way. Bring you in. See, 37.5. So, ah, let's just move this one a hair. There we go. We are zeroed. Thirty-seven point three. fussy but hey you know what if you're gonna do it i guess do it right there we go i just had a notification that there was motion at my front door 37.1 37.1. Okay, we're good. We're going to call that. We're going to call that done. Oh, look at that. There we go. Let's be precise. Okay, so we've got our 37. We've got our measurements done, uh, top and bottom, and they're good. Okay, chain visibility frame. 
Oh, we got to preload a whole lot more nuts. I'm going to call it for now. Um, which slot? If in doubt, reference the pictures on page 38 and 39. Okay. Well, I'm going to... That's a fair bit done tonight. I mean, we made a little bit more progress, but I think I'm tired. My neck is getting sore, and yeah. And this just wants to preload a whole bunch more nuts. So we're going to call it a night, and we're going to pick this up again probably around the same time tomorrow night, like uh, 9 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock, depending on when the uh, rest of the fam goes to bed. They're early, they're early sleepers, and I'm, a, I'm an 11 to 11.30 type guy and up at 6.30. So um, I'm, you know, six and a half, seven and a half hours, I'm good to go. So... This page is deceiving, very deceiving. Look closely about adding nuts. Yeah, um, I see that. It looks very, um, let me zoom in a little bit on it here too, even. Um, oops, yeah. Uh, okay, they're going to want to add that piece, which is the other end of the chain, which is fine. Um, but yeah, I can kind of see, it's all in the angles you're looking at it, right? Like, because I look at this and I see, I see two rails here. I see a linear rail and I see the other extrusion and this one. Um, and it's like, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm definitely going to be very careful at this stage. I'll do this tomorrow. As I say, when I've got a fresher mind, because I'm a little tired right now and it does say, you know, and it does tell you, okay, reference, or let me just do the full page view. Um, it does say reference page 38 and 39. So I would come here, 38 and 39 uh, just to verify I have enough nuts in the right place. But yeah, this does look like it's because you're looking 4, 7, 11, 14, 17. You're looking at 20 preloads there. There's 24 preloads, you know. So 24 more preloads to go before, you know, we, we get to the next step. And I think um, I, I think I need to print more. I don't know if I have 24 of them in here. But I'll print more of these. I'm the uh, top hats printing on the uh, um, printer right now, and I think I'll just when that's done in the morning. Hopefully, that's done by the morning. I think it said there's six hours left on it. I'll just run a whole bed full of these black, half bed full of the black uh, square, and a half a bed full of the um, hex. And that way, I have tons because that'll probably be like 200 more. Or so, because these things, oh, I'll probably even more. I could probably fit a thousand on the bed with this, but probably print them pretty quick. But that's what I'll do it. Hey, 3D printing, Joey. Yeah, still going. Just got a few more things. So we're, we're going to be doing a couple hours every night. Um, so we got the uh, we got the bed. Oops, we got the, uh, yeah, right here. We got the bed. Oh, I can actually go to this camera. We got the bed on. So it's it's on there. We got the so we have the Z linear rails on. We have the Y Z, the little the Y linear rails on. Um, we've preloaded a whole bunch of nuts, and now we're at a point where I'm just too tired to think anymore. So we're gonna pick it up again tomorrow night, same time, same channels, and uh, we got 24. I think I counted nuts to preload before we move on. So I got to print some more preloaded um, nut holders. So yeah, we're good. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. Um, appreciate all the tips. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, too. Where's my mouse? Goodness gracious. Uh, thanks for everybody. Thanks, Jason, for being on. Ben, everybody who's still on, I appreciate it. Um, looks like we have, uh, oh, most of you are on YouTube. That's great. And five on Twitch. And I, I, I want to actually drop off before somebody decides to raid me because I'm tired and I want to go take a break. So, um no problem. Um, so tomorrow night, Joey, 3D Printing Joey, I'm Mountain Standard Time. I'll be on between 8.30 and 9 o'clock again for another hour, hour and a half or two. So we'll catch everybody later. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And we will see you guys then. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.